Good afternoon. The Secretary General and the Prime Minister will make uh, short opening remarks and then we'll have time for a couple of questions. Secretary General. <coughs> so, Prime Minister Peter Pellegrini, it's a great uh, pleasure and uh, honor to welcome you here at the NATO headquarters. Uh, uh, this is your first visit. Uh, let me also congratulate you on your appointment as uh, Prime Minister. We discussed uh, many issues during our meeting. We addressed uh, the main topics uh, as we prepare for the next summit of NATO uh, in July here in Brussels, how to strengthen NATO's deterrence and defense, how to project stability to our neighborhood, and how to continue to modernize the alliance. And this is a response from the whole alliance uh, to a more uh, demanding and unpredictable security environment, which includes a more assertive Russia, and also the turmoil and the violence we see uh, in the Middle East and North uh, Africa. And I would like to start by thanking you, Prime Minister, for the many contributions Slovakia is making uh, to NATO, uh, to our shared security, to our collective defense. Uh, you contribute to our enhanced uh, forward presence uh, in, um, in, in Latvia uh, with your troops uh, there. Uh, you uh, host uh, what we call a NATO Force Integration Unit, which is a small command which can coordinate uh, exercises, do uh, planning, and facilitate, uh, and, and facilitate rapid uh, reinforcements, uh, deployments, uh, if uh, uh, needed. I also very much welcome the fact that um, Slovakia is uh, making uh, major contributions to different NATO missions and operations. I recently visited uh, Iraq, where I met uh, Slovak trainers that um, help uh, to uh, train uh, local security forces. And also the fact that you have trainers and also funding uh, for the Afghan uh, national uh, uh, security forces and uh, army. And on top of that, you also play a role in Ukraine. Uh, Slovakia is the lead nation in a trust fund to help handling unexploded munition. So uh, uh, you uh, play uh, an important part, and we, Slovakia is a highly uh, valued uh, uh, ally. Um, we also uh, discussed the situation in uh, Syria. We condemn uh, in the strongest terms the use of uh, chemical weapons. The latest attack was horrendous, uh, killing dozens of uh, people, including many children. We call on the Syrian regime and its backers to allow full and unimpeded access uh, to international medical assistance and international monitoring. NATO considers the use of chemical weapons a threat to international peace and security, and those responsible must be held accountable. We must do all we can to protect the ban on the use of chemical uh, weapons. Prime Minister, let me also strongly thank uh, Slovakia for um, increasing uh, defense spending, for investing more uh, in our um, security. Uh, you brought your uh, Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Finance Minister Kasimir, and I think that the fact that he was in the meeting just uh, uh, underlined uh, the uh, Slovak commitment uh, to uh, increasing uh, defense investments. And we welcome your strong commitment to reach our goal of spending 2% of GDP uh, on defense by 2024. We also welcome the fact that uh, Slovakia has already uh, 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 met the guideline of spending 2%, uh, 20% of the, the budget on a major uh, equipment. So, Prime Minister, it's great to have you here. And it's... Uh, 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 great to welcome you, and I look forward to continue to work together with you. So once again, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, dear Secretary General. If you allow me, I will use my language, and uh, I will answer some questions, and or my, I will do my statement in the Slovak language. Ladies and gentlemen, I can only confirm that with General Secretary, we have had a very good and a thorough discussion. 
And uh, even this meeting is a proof of its own, of our unilateral and uh, undisputed uh, membership in NATO and in the European Union, because it is my second foreign visit, uh, second visit as a prime minister. After visiting Czech Republic, I was directly traveling to Brussels to the NATO headquarters, because we do want to maintain continuity in our defense activities, in our security activities, and my government will make sure that Slovakia will continue to be a reliable reliable partner and reliable ally in the NATO structure. I have informed uh, Mr. Secretary General about our plans to increase the defense spending. As uh, we have signaled to our allies, uh, namely uh, by 2020 to reach the threshold 1.6% of GDP, and uh, the 2% threshold should be reached in 2024. Uh, already in 2021, uh, we should be uh, in the proposed uh, medium-term budget have 1.7 GDP dedicated for defense spending. Uh, we would like to invest it especially in modernizing of the most important equipment of our armed forces They're directly in line with uh, the principles and with the priorities as agreed uh, among allies. So we should be building and developing those parts of armed forces where our key competences are and where we should be a key ally to our partners. Uh, where should we build our own capacity? In other words, I'd like to say that uh, government will uh, give a mandate for future mission um, of Slovak forces. So from 15th of June, we will send 152 soldiers to Latvia, who will be part of our collective defense of eastern flank of NATO. And I have also confirmed that Slovak soldiers, Slovak armed forces and our instructors will continue to be actively present in Afghanistan and Iraq as they have been doing so far. We uh, expect a lot from the upcoming summit of NATO here in Brussels because we do want to send a clear message that there is a unity among us, among the Allies, that we have a joint uh, will to face international threats wherever they may come from. At the same time, we have also talked about the need to strengthen uh, the cooperation between EU and NATO. We have talked about uh, the uh, common defense policy of the European Union, but only as a, uh, as a tool to reinforce the European pillar in NATO, not to build a parallel uh, defense doctrine or to, or to have a, a dual uh, structure alongside NATO. So um, those things that are covered by NATO should be only strengthened and uh, revisited. Slovakia continues to be a member of NATO who has great expectations also in a way of a further expansion of NATO, especially in Western Balkans, because this is needed. We need to uh, reinvigorate this process. We need to uh, motivate other countries to become part of NATO as well. And NATO shouldn't be uh, a closed club for the future. It should, be, it should remain open for those who would like to join us, for those who would like to um, fill or meet the criteria that we all are sharing. Sharing. And together, uh, we have also discussed the uh, cybersecurity issue with the General Secretary General, uh, where I informed the Secretary General that also in this area, Slovakia plans to uh, invest uh, significant significant amounts in future months and years to come, because uh, in this area, Slovakia is also a leader in uh, cybersecurity and cyber defense. We have uh, key experts who are crucial parts uh, uh, of NATO infrastructure and they uh, regularly win the different NATO competitions when facing uh, different hacker threats, for example. And Slovak Republic in the future would also like to have significant capacity and capability and also the necessary technical background in order to um, provide for our uh, cyber security, not only of the Slovak cyber area, but also to defend the cyberspace of uh, EU and NATO. Uh, uh, dear Secretary General, uh, it is for me a great pleasure that I will have the possibility to meet you again in May already, because uh, we will meet each other at the conference Globsec in Bratislava in May, so you are warmly welcome and uh, very good to see you again in Bratislava. Thank you. Okay, we have time for a couple of questions. Uh, lady over there, Slovak Television and Radio. 
Dobrý deň, Daniela Hajčaková, Slovenska Good morning, televízia, um, RTVS. Slovak, uh, Radio uh, and TV. Um, I would like to ask about the relation with Russia on um, two layers. Uh, one issue is the poisoning of Sergei Skripal. Have you discussed this case as well? And what is also the stance of NATO? Because NATO has sent uh, or has also um, hosted certain diplomats from NATO, so or they haven't extended uh, their accreditation. Um, Slovakia has uh, recalled its ambassador from Moscow, but we haven't uh, cancelled uh, presence of any Russian diplomats. Have you discussed about uh, steps to be taken in the future? And also the current situation in Syria. The American president is uh, considering a, a, a military response to the chemical gas uh, attack. So what is uh, your uh, take? What do you think about the situation? This is a question for both of you. During the meeting with the Secretary General, we have not discussed uh, the Skripal case in the United Kingdom. Here I'd like to emphasize one issue that uh, the position of Slovak diplomacy and the Slovak uh, decision uh, to recall our ambassador from Moscow is an adequate response, uh, especially adequate to our knowledge of the situation so far and adequate of uh, what we knew at that point in time. On the other hand, I would like to also use this opportunity to, um, to reaffirm also, Mr. Secretary General, that this um, hostile act of uh, Russia cannot be taken, or the, the fact that we have recalled our ambassador, um, this is uh, this by no means under undermines our membership in NATO. We are a reliable and uh, a, a, a loyal member of NATO, and we will continue to be uh, uh, such in the future. This was simply a decision um, that we have taken. There were many other decisions by other countries in EU. Uh, we have taken a decision that we, which we have taken but this has no implication on our membership in NATO or on the relationship with our NATO partners. Regarding Syria, we have discussed with Secretary General that uh, the priority is to, first of all, clearly refuse uh, uh, any tolerance of chemical weapons, especially used against civilians. And we have also um, we have also uh, conveyed a strong message against those perpetrators. But for us as members of NATO, it is a priority to make sure that uh, experts, expert teams will have a place to work, will, will have a chance to monitor and observe the situation in the field, on the ground, and will provide us with clear information from the place. And also it is a an absolute priority to make sure that uh, international medical teams will have access uh, and will provide um, uh, first aid to those uh, who were victims of these attacks. Uh, regarding your commentary to possible attacks of NATO members, well, there is a discussion uh, going on at the level of the alliance of what are the other possible uh, venues to, to look for, uh, apart from international experts and monitors, how uh, else to react. But I'm not going to comment any further on that. The Organization for Prohibition of uh, Chemical Weapons uh, uh, published a report today, uh, and uh, uh, that report uh, uh, confirms the British findings on the nerve agent used in uh, the Salisbury attack. And this is the first time uh, that a nerve agent has been used on NATO territory. Uh, we, we, we uh, of course, uh, address this uh, in a very serious way. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we also have to understand that uh, this attack um, uh, takes, uh, uh, has taken place against the background uh, uh, of uh, a pattern of reckless behavior of Russia over several years, uh, with the illegal annexation of Crimea, with uh, the efforts to continue to destabilize eastern Ukraine, uh, different cyber attacks, uh, and also the fact that uh, uh, Russia has, uh, in different way, ways, tried to uh, interfere in our democratic domestic uh, processes. So that was the reason why also uh, my many NATO allies and also NATO as an alliance decided to expel uh, Russian uh, officials as a result of the, uh, as, a, as a response to the uh, Salisbury uh, attack. Um, uh, when it comes to uh, the situation in Syria, we are, as I said, extremely concerned. Uh, we strongly condemn uh, the use of chemical weapons. Uh, many civilians, uh, many children have been killed, and we call on unhindered uh, and full access for international monitors uh, to the area. Uh, and also, uh, uh, we uh, strongly uh, uh, underline the importance of protecting the 
uh, ban uh, on the use of uh, chemical weapons, and therefore those responsible has to be held accountable after the use of chemical weapons uh, in, uh, in Syria. Uh, last question, Tas. Thank you very much, TAS News Agency. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, uh, 15 years ago, uh, the State Secretary of United States, Colin Powell, has said in, in the Council or Security Council of United Nations that Iraq had uh, weapons of mass destruction, which leads to a disastrous invasion in this country, and the, as, as an aftermatch, the creation of the Daesh. So, I am not afraid that uh, supporting the uh, allegations of uh, chemical attack in Syria without clear uh, verification mechanism may lead us to more disastrous uh, results. And I using the uh, military to military communications lines with Russia to avoid uh, such uh, consequences. Thank you very much. The attack uh, took uh, place uh, in an area which is uh, where the Assad regime and its uh, backers uh, are operating. Um, and uh, Russia and Iran uh, provide strong support to the Assad regime. The Assad regime has used chemical weapons uh, before. And one of the main messages we have after the attack uh, in eastern Ghouta, in Douma, is that we uh, call for uh, full and uh, unimpeded access uh, for international observers. Uh, and uh, we call on uh, the Assad regime, but also on its supporters, uh, Iran and, uh, and Russia, to make that uh, uh, possible, uh, both to allow international observers, but also to allow the uh, medical assistance uh, uh, access to the uh, area. Um, uh, Consultations are ongoing between NATO allies uh, on how to respond to the uh, attack. Um, we think it is important that those responsible are held accountable, and we strongly uh, believe that it's important to uh, protect uh, the ban on chemical weapons, because this is really an important uh, convention, uh, which we all have to do uh, our utmost to protect. So the use of chemical weapons in, in, in Syria it's not only serious because many civilians are killed, but it's also serious because it undermines uh, the rules-based order, uh, the uh, convention banning uh, nuclear, uh, uh, chemical weapons. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Thank you. Thank you very much.